Okay, I'm here with Stan Schultz, uh, the owner of Schultz and Summers Engineering. Uh, Stan, could you tell us a little bit about this project that you uh, guys did here at Archer Western? Well, this project is known as uh, LPV 109. It's in uh, Chalmette, the eastern part of New Orleans. Uh, the project was seven miles long, started at Lake Pontchartrain on the north, uh, went to seven miles to the south and tied in with another big project, LPV 111, uh, that's also an Archer Western job. The reason that we decided to try and go after this project was uh, uh, twofold. Uh, first, it was a very innovative project. I'd studied this project while it was being, uh, uh, public hearings were coming out, seeing it had a very innovative design. And the second reason is it had three million tons of dirt and there's an extensive amount of testing of that dirt on this project. The total cost of this project uh, ended up being in excess of $120 million to build seven miles of, of levee to 100-year uh, protection standards. And this was the, is, is this the biggest job in your company's history to work on? This job uh, had a fee for Schultz and Summers Engineering just shy of $2 million and it's probably about twice as big as our largest project prior to date. Uh, my name is Martin Pospisil. I'm a project manager for our choice and contractors on um, the Slevy project. Well, the Slevy is about 7.2 miles of uh, earth and 3 million cubic yards of clay embankment uh, uh, imported to, to the levy uh, uh, for roughly like, you know, one year, year project. So it was a pretty challenging job. It's about a uh, $140 million project, um, like I said, 3 million cubic yards of clay to uh, bring to the levee during the hurricane season and uh, winter. Uh, uh, so uh, it, was a, it was a big, challenging job, and um, we made the deadline. We'd be still on the schedule. Uh, we finished um, uh, the embankment and met the milestone June 1st, the hurricane, uh, hurricane season. Uh, uh, so uh, it's been a great, successful job. Is this the biggest project you've ever taken on? Oh yeah, definitely, without a doubt. And uh, by, by far the most challenging. Yeah, and uh, you know, 100, 100 million, $140 million dollar project for one year, that's, that's a lot of revenue in place in a short period of time. And obviously three million cubic yards of borrow material that, you know, I, I don't think that we've ever uh, uh, brought this much clay to the project in such a short period of time. Okay. So I would imagine with subcontractors, um, it was somewhere around 200 employees, but that obviously doesn't account uh, the, all the truck drivers. Again, clay was the majority of, uh, of the scope of work. So in our, you know, at the peak, we had about 600 trucks driving on the job every day. So. How far away did you have to go to get that clay? But most of our borrowed pits were um, anywhere between 20, 30, and 40 miles away. So a pretty good trip to get in. Right, yeah. yes. We, we utilize about uh, five different uh, borrowed pits. Now, you, you had uh, SSE, Schultz and Summers, doing your testing. Uh, what, what was the reason you decided to pick them to, to join you on this job? Well, obviously, at the beginning of the job, we, um, uh, we were comparing all the bidders. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we met with all of them. who give us quotes in a bit time. Uh, we start with uh, obviously low bidders. Uh, and uh, so, you know, Shilton Summers was a low bidder. And um, also uh, during their interview, they, they seemed to be a, um, a company with great references. And uh, we liked uh, dealing with them. And, uh, and uh, it's been a pleasant experience. So the gray, the gray uh, gates are what actually will close this highway off and protect the water from coming through. That's correct. Those, that's our hurricane protection okay. here at the intersection of the US 90. So this is a levee 109 and US 90 intersection. And you guys have a lot of your equipment out here and the whole bit. We've had an extensive amount of equipment out here. How many personnel total are working on this project? At our peak, we had uh, about a 175. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at an actual drain that goes underneath the levee. This is drainage structure number three. It's right through these structures here. They got uh, uh, gates for keeping out the trash. So 
floating debris, um, animals, alligators, and that's the top of the hill there. We have our uh, sluice gates. Underneath here we have 54 inch pipe. I'll open those gates and maintain the level of life. So they, and if there was a hurricane or a storm, they could shut them and that would keep the water from coming this way. Okay, that makes sense. We're here today in Archer Western's conference room, uh, the on-site office complex. And it's inside this room that I've become very familiar with uh, the team members, both for the government and for Archer Western. And we uh, did our pre-planning, we did our uh, uh, production meetings and just pretty much anything that was important we all gathered here on a weekly basis and, and went over uh, schedules and plans to make sure the job runs smoothly. And some of the things that are in this room that become important were just visual aids that helped us identify what, what the project consisted of. These are track hose, large track hose that have got wick drain machines attached to them. There were nine million feet of wick drains. You can see this complex layout here. You see how hot it was. I had an umbrella here to keep the guy cool, but nine million feet, that's 1,700 miles of wick drains. Just like a wick that's in your a brick of your house. Its purpose was to weep the water up out of the swamp to help settling uh, happen much faster than it would have in normal conditions. And so these wick drains were put in and then we came in next and we put in 126 monitoring wells. They were anything from piezometers which me measured water pressure, slope incomometers which measured the way that the levee wanted to move laterally, uh, magnetic extensometers which measured the compact the, the settlement of the levee in, in interior part of the levee so we did a tremendous amount of drilling uh, for this project the whole seven mile length and then as you move around the room you see different uh, photos in time as the project progressed and so folks you can just see this this is like Pontchartrain to the north and you can see as we as we move through the uh, the project as we get to it just starts to take shape. Okay, on this wall, what you see is this massive schematic diagram. This shows the seven miles of project. The north side here, which is where Lake Pontchartrain starts, we had this project divided up into four areas. The first area is for Lake Pontchartrain, the Interstate 10. And the second uh, area was from I-10 to the Highway 11 crossing. Then we had a three and a half mile section that went all the way down to Highway 90. Uh, the South Highway 90 has about the same lore as Route 66 does, so it's kind of the unique thing that we crossed Highway 90. And then we went south another couple of miles all the way to the, the uh, railroad, and then at this point we tied in with another project that Archer Western built that was like a $350 million project. Okay, now I'm with uh, Stan Schultz, and we're out on the actual levee that uh, that uh, SSE helped helped build. Stan, could you explain a little bit of some of the drilling and the instrumentation and the innovative approach that the Corps took uh, to uh, repairing this levee? Well, that's the neatest thing about this job is the innovation that took place. We're standing here today 22 feet above sea level where we started. So back in the office, we looked when we started, we come in with the sand layer, we put 9 million feet of wood drains in. My company didn't do that. It was done by a subcontractor. And that wick drain, it, it wicked the water up out of the swamp, and then it, through a gravel bed, it was all directed away from the levee. So then we came in and we drilled a series of holes. There's 26 different locations of holes we drilled. We're on top of the levee. We have one pipe here that's what they call magnetic extensometer. It goes out about 52, 53 feet, and its purpose during construction was to measure consolidation of the levee. This, is, is this pipe has four grooves in it. It goes down again 40, 50 feet. Um, we've got a device here that goes down and can measure the lateral movement of the levee. Now that's not so important during construction, but during an event, when the hurricane would, would bring a storm in and the storm surge would be testing this levee, they could come back after the fact and see if the levee stayed true or if it moved some. One of the most important things that I learned from this project is these tools that we're looking at today are, are 
very important tools that's in the, the Corps of Engineers toolbox to monitor levees so that these levees can be maintained and repaired prior to the catastrophic event that we had in 2011, the first time since the flood of 27, as our system has been tested so greatly. So over time, we're going to see more and more of these monitoring wells up and down the river system because it's going to give the Corps the ability to tell where there's problems and to fix those problems before it's an emergency and there's failure. We're now down to the water's edge and at the, with the edge of our construction. What you can see is the levee in the background and then you've got the scour protection down here. You've got what we talked about before is the inclinometer which measures lateral movement of the earth. This right here is a simply a benchmark, but we had to core 50 feet into the ground before we got stable enough soil that that benchmark wouldn't settle. What this is, is kind of fancy, is just a piezometer, and this wire goes all the way down to a measuring device that's down in the ground about 30, 40 feet, and the, the core or their consultant can come in and plug into that and get instant readings on the behavior of the, the, le the pore pressure in the levee uh, below ground. So the neat thing that was uh, left uh, with the project that's now helped manage the levee system. Uh, Ralphie Ocampos, uh, um, quality control uh, manager for LPV 109. I guess when the testing comes, that's when you work with Schultz and Summers Engineering? Yes, we work with them on a daily basis. Who is kind of the key person you've dealt with mostly from SSE uh, as, as they've helped you with this job? Uh, when the first project first started, it was Thomas uh, Hudson, and uh, with him, kinda, he handed the reins over to Corey uh, over the last probably six months. Were you able to keep Stan Schultz out of your hair so that you could actually give make progress? Yeah, he uh, actually he was real involved in the very beginning. We had a, a several hip, hiccups with the instrumentation, but once that got uh, they handled, uh, he kind of stepped to the side and let his uh, personnel take care of everything. Did you did you feel comfortable with the service that you got from Schultz and Summers? I mean, did they do a good job as far as uh, testing out here? Yeah, they did an excellent job. We uh, they were, they worked with us really really well. Uh, things that came up that needed to be uh, uh, immediately, they they uh, took care of us. If you had any complaints, what would you complain about with them as far as something they could have done better or, or should have done better? Uh, there wasn't really any major complaints at all. I mean, we, we, they were able to handle uh, any, any issues that came up. Uh, they, uh, the personnel, staff, they, they beefed it up when we really needed it. And uh, uh, other than that, I mean, that, that was about it. This is really mostly a, a soil type of uh, project with all this levy. So really it was the soil tests that, that, that were the main focus of what SSE was doing? Yes, correct. There were, I think there was over, I think we've done over 2,000, uh, 2,500 tests within the last year. Wow. And uh, just most recently, we were doing 19 to 20 tests a day. Okay. Uh, if you were going to work on another project, would you feel comfortable having SSE? Would that be the testing company the, of your choice to, to work beside you? I, uh, definitely, yes. Uh, uh, they would be very considered uh, in uh, providing the services to us. I'm sitting here at the closure structure at Highway 90 project. And you can see now that the concrete's all done and the project's completed. And as I look back on my experiences here in the last two years, I've started uh, working real hard to just get hired. And what started out to be a group of strangers uh, ended up becoming my friends and, and peers and people that I look up to. Martin, the project manager, treated us very well. Our quality control folks we worked with, from Bill Wheeler to Raphael to, to Stephen, uh, were wonderful to us. Uh, our team that was out here, uh, several of our folks, Thomas Hudson and Corey Brown and Jace, uh, they just all came together and worked as a team. And this is just one sign of what a team can do to come together as total strangers and 18 months later have such a, a massive project done successfully. Someday, many years from now, there's probably going to be another hurricane in New Orleans. And let's, let's hope there's not. But when there is, we're going to get some satisfaction in knowing that this project is going to protect New Orleans from the eastern storm surge that they suffered through this last time. And my children know that when I got to work on this, and it's a, it's a big deal to, to my family personally and to the company. And it's just a fascinating project that everybody should come and see.